Mark chapter 10, verse 17 to 18. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. No one is good except God. Jesus asserts that only God is truly good, emphasizing the absolute and perfect nature of God's goodness. In contrast, human beings fall short of this divine standard due to their inherent sinfulness. I recently saw an interview with the Pope where he made a statement that directly opposed this Bible verse. When you look at the world, what gives you hope? Todo. Everything. Uno ve you see tragedies, Pero ve but you also see so many beautiful things. Cosas lindas. Uno ve madres heroicas. You see heroic mothers, Hombres heroicas. heroic men, men who have hopes and dreams, women who look to the future. That gives me a lot of hope. People want to live. People forge ahead. And people are fundamentally good. What the Pope said here is fundamentally wrong, and it is a path that leads many away from the cross of Jesus Christ. The illusion that we are good people is a comforting yet deceptive assumption. Many people live under this belief, which fosters a sense of complacency and stops them from seeking Jesus Christ, the only one who can offer true redemption. It's easy to point fingers at hardened criminals in jail cells, branding them as the real sinners while viewing ourselves as fundamentally good. However, this dichotomy is a dangerous delusion. Many people view bad individuals as criminals or those who break the law or have been arrested, but they see themselves as good people. I am a good person. I pay my taxes. I am a good person. I have never been arrested. I am a good person. I look after my family. I am a good person. I do not hurt or harm anyone. They live their whole lives, growing older, thinking and believing wholeheartedly that they are good people. We must confront the reality that we are all sinners, liars, thieves, murderers, adulterers, fornicators, who desperately need saving. Living under the illusion of our fundamental goodness blinds us to our need for a savior. We are all wicked sinners. It's a subtle yet powerful deception that can span an entire lifetime. People grow older, sometimes becoming more entrenched in this self-deception, believing that they are essentially good. They might never engage in overtly criminal behavior, but they fail to recognize their own failings in front of a holy God. Romans 5 verse 12 to 15. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. We are all sinners, each and every one of us. We are all sinners who deserve hell. We deserve every bit of hell for the sins we have committed. God would have been fully justified to send all of us to hell. But thank God, the God of the Bible is supremely kind to guilty sinners like you and me. I thank God for Jesus and all he did for me on the cross. I thank God for my relationship with him and all he did for me on the cross. Oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is no other name but Jesus. There is no other door but Jesus. There is no other king but Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life, eternal life the giver of life. All life flows from him. All life comes through him. What I love about Jesus is that he forgives the unforgivable. He touches the untouchables. He finds the lost. He is not a respecter of persons. If you want a relationship with him, right now, wherever you are, you can cry out to him and he will meet you where you are. 
You can be a cast out in society. You could be locked in a prison cell, serving a mandatory life sentence. Society could have thrown away the key for your cell, but right now, Jesus, Jesus can come into your life and you can have a relationship with him. You can be heartbroken and alone, but right now, Jesus, Jesus can come into your life and you can have a relationship with him. You can be facing illness and be unsure whether you are going to make it or not. But right now, Jesus, Jesus can come into your life and you can have a relationship with him. You can be fearing death and fearing hell, but right now, Jesus, Jesus can come into your life and you can have a relationship with him. We are all fundamentally good. Yes, there are some rogues and sinners, but the heart itself is good. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. Subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos that are uploaded every day. All right, let's keep rolling. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? This one verse opposes the Pope's statement. The context of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 speaks of Judah's sinfulness despite all the blessings of God. The verse states, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? This highlights a profound truth. Our hearts are not only deceitful but also desperately wicked. You might say, I know my heart. But do you truly? Are you absolutely certain you know how you will react in every situation? The reality is, you don't. Knowing your heart means understanding how you will respond in every conceivable circumstance. But there are situations that can push anyone to act out of character. Life can present challenges that drive you to your breaking point, leading you to do things you never imagined. Consider this. There are people in prison right now because they did something they never thought they would. Lives have been ruined by actions individuals never believed they were capable of. The human heart harbors unknown depths of potential evil. Look at all the murderers in prison. If you saw pictures of them as children, you would never have predicted their future crimes. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. No one truly knows the extent of the evil within the human heart. Some preach that human beings are inherently good, but this is not true. We don't know the wickedness that lies within people's hearts. How many times have we heard people say, I don't know what made me do that. I don't know what came over me, or I don't know why I did that. The truth is they genuinely don't know. The heart is deceitful. The human heart is diseased with sin. You don't know your heart. Don't trust your heart or your feelings. Instead, trust the Word of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, not yourself. The heart can refer to many things, but in this context, it represents the seat of the soul, emotions, and desires. Being led by the heart means being driven by lusts or emotionalism. Instead, you are to be led by a renewed mind, not by your heart or emotions. I recall counseling a couple on the brink of divorce. The wife had committed adultery with a colleague she had been working closely with for some time. Over the course of their working relationship, they developed feelings for each other, and she ultimately followed her heart into an affair. She explained that the affair happened because she followed her heart. The Bible tells us, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. If this woman had followed a mind renewed by the word of God, she would not have committed adultery. As a pastor, I witness the deceptive nature of the human heart frequently. I have seen people walk down the aisle with someone they should not be marrying. Despite warnings from their parents and friends, they proceed because they are following their heart. They fail to recognize that the person they are about to commit their future to lacks the characteristics of a great life partner. Let me give you some real-world examples of how deceitful the human heart is. 
the human heart is so deceitful that it sometimes leads people to interpret scripture to suit their own wants and desires. I have seen men sit with the Bible and attempt to justify having more than one wife, reading their own lustful desires into the scripture. They go point by point, explaining how they believe they are called to have multiple wives, twisting scripture to suit their sinful desires. The human heart is so deceitful that it can lead a person to justify their own sins using the Bible, misquoting and misinterpreting scripture. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Some people cite biblical characters who had multiple wives as justification for their sinful lifestyle. It's crucial to understand that while the Bible is inspired by the Holy Spirit, it is also an accurate record of history. Not everything recorded in the Bible means that God condoned those actions. The Bible transparently presents human choices, providing context and scenarios without necessarily endorsing them. I recall watching a courtroom proceeding where a woman sought a divorce because she was not happy anymore and her heart was not in the marriage. Her husband had not cheated and was, by her own admission, a good provider, but the spark in their relationship had faded. This is a perfect example of how the heart can be deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Unfortunately, such situations are becoming increasingly common. Marriage is about loyalty, faithfulness in good and bad times, trustworthiness and commitment. It is not just for moments of happiness and excitement. Marriage is a lifelong commitment to the person you chose to marry. Sadly, with the advent of social media, people often compare their marriages to others. However, what you see on social media is not always real. People lie and pretend. You don't know what is happening in other people's marriages, so don't compare yours to theirs. Many are deceived by their own hearts believing they are living in fellowship with God and that they are going to heaven, yet they are not born again. There are those who preach that human beings are good by nature, but this is not true. We don't fully grasp the wickedness within human hearts. How many times have people said, I don't know what made me do that, or I don't know what came over me? The heart is deceitful. You need a new heart, and only God Almighty can provide that. The only hope for the sinful human heart is to be supernaturally changed. You must be born again. The new covenant brings inner transformation. Only through being born again can one truly experience a change of heart. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.